Hi, this is Chef Jeff, and this is Creative Cooking in a Messy Kitchen. Uh, tonight we're going to make um, something I kind of invented, a nice easy dish for that anybody can make at home. I call it pretzel and crusted chicken uh, with uh, steamed potatoes and broccoli and carrots. Um, here's some of the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need some broccoli, and the amounts will vary on the size of your family. Some uh, chicken breast, uh, skinless, boneless. Some potatoes, I like the small ones with the mixed variety. Some uh, petite carrots. A little bit of parquet score, your favorite brand of squeeze butter. Uh, can of cream of chicken soup. Some unsalted pretzels. Important to have unsalted pretzels because um, if you go with the salted pretzels, then your end product is may be too salty. Now, if you're the one that likes salt, that might be good, but I suggest go with the unsalted pretzels and then add your own salt and pepper to taste. Some of the equipment that you'll need for this project, uh, but not necessary, but this is what I'm going to use. I have a steamer. We'll steam my vegetables and my potatoes. A food processor to crush up your uh, pretzels. If you don't have a steamer, but you have a saucepan and a uh, strainer, you can always put some water in the pan and put this in the pan, put your broccoli and stuff in here, boil it, let the lid cover it with the lid so it steams it. Uh, if you don't have a food processor, you can always take like a Ziploc bag throw some uh, pretzels in a Ziploc bag, crush it up with your hands or rolling pin, just get it crushed up nice and fine. So in a moment we will begin uh, our next uh, step of the process right after these messages. This is all spray editing, Paul. As soon as these, they are spreading rapidly. I won't die! You don't do this! Extraordinary. It seems to harness the powers of illusion or even shape shifting. They told me there was a new shifter, but I didn't believe it. Shifter is walking right into our trap. Start talking! Hello! Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, we got Chef Jim with us today. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to preheat your oven to 425. So Chef Jim, will show you that's uh, set over there on 425. I got my uh, potatoes in the steamer here started. And as I mentioned, if you don't have a steamer, you have other ways of doing that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and crush up some pretzels now. Now, <gasps> I want to do it. Like I mentioned. Uh, depending on how many people in your family and how many much chicken you want to make, you know, is the, it varies. So you just crush up the pretzels, and when I get to the portion I show you with the chicken, if you get through your chicken, you still need more pretzels. You obviously crush up more pretzels. That's all there is to it. Um, again, we're using unsalted pretzels because we don't want our dish to be too salty at the end. So, Jim, go ahead. Not all of them. Just put some a few of them in there. Okay. Lid on, lock it, hold down the button, hold it, on, hold it. Okay. Finer, see how that's uh, still pretty good sized chunks. Sometimes, if you give it a shake, how it goes, it'll get them off some shape.
you get your pretzels crushed up. You want to pour them in a container that's big enough to hold a breast of chicken. Obviously this isn't enough. We're going to crush some more up uh, during commercial um, so you don't have to hear all that loud noise. Now remember, if you don't have a food processor, not everybody has one, take a Ziploc bag and if you hold one second, I'll show you. Ziploc bag, a few pretzels in, lay it on the hard surface, crush them up with your hand. Same exact thing. Sometimes it's even easier to do it the old fashioned way. Okay, so potatoes are cooking. They'll take uh, 20 minutes probably to cook. Uh, you got your uh, pretzels crushed up and you got your oven set. Um, right after this break, we'll come back and we'll show you the steps for the chicken. Explicit forecasting. All the way up you call it in the next two minutes, though. So. Next two minutes? It's <laughs> raining out here. It's gonna be 10,000 <laughs> degrees. That's all for today's <laughs> raincast. Welcome back. Um, we're on to our next step. We're gonna start preparing our chicken. You see I have one here that I've already laid out for you, but I'll go ahead and show you what I did. Um, when you get the chicken at the store, it's usually a big, nice, thick piece like this. The problem with this is it takes forever to cook. So the first thing you want to start with is trim off some of the excess fat. You don't need that. little connective joint here. You get this right here. If you don't cut that off, that's really, really tough. So you get rid of that. And there's usually, sometimes there's a little fat right there that you need to get rid of. And then you want to, what's called butterfly. So you take about halfway through the chicken breast slice slowly, don't cut your hand off and you kind of open it up like this keep going but you don't want to go all the way through like this and now you got a nice flat large piece of chicken to cook and that'll probably be one uh, one serving so here's one person, two person Two more breasts, uh, feed a family of four. Um, so we got our potatoes cooking. We got our chicken about ready to go. Uh, come back in uh, about a minute and we'll go to the next step. The switching to Geico really saves you 15% or more on car insurance. Is having a snowball fight with your dad's car a bad idea? Oh, I hate this car. Oh. I did not just do that. Uh. Break my window with a snowball. Oh, I gotta go call Geico. Geico. Bye, car insurance. Welcome back. Um, while on break, I went ahead and decided on those larger, since they were so big, I went ahead and cut them in half into uh, more of a fillet. <clears throat> I think it'll be a little bit better for us. Now, you mentioned the parquet. What I did is I took a little bit of the squeezable parquet and I put it on this uh, deep lid. That'll fit the chicken. You could use a bowl or whatever you can fit your chicken in. We have our pretzels. Now what you should do with your pretzels, just put a little bit in the bowl, and then as you go, have a second bowl, add the pretzels to it as you need it. Now the reason you do that is once you put your raw chicken in here, when you're done, you have to throw this away. So if you don't use all your pretzels, you can put a lid on this and save it for the next time. And this recipe works well with uh, tilapia, um, or, or cod, other fish, um, as well as uh, the chicken. So it's good for different dishes. So what we do here, you first want to take your chicken tender. You always want to season. Anytime you use protein, you want to make sure you season your protein. You know, steak, chicken, anything you got. So a little salt and pepper on there. A little bit of butter. 
into your crumbs. Don't do that. Save that for the blooper reel. Okay, and onto your sheet tray. And your sheet tray should be sprayed down with uh, some sort of shortening like uh, Pam or if you have lard or something you can smear it down with, make sure it's grease so it don't stick. Now, I want to answer at this time a viewer email. Uh, Crazy Chef 16 emailed us and asked, What temperature should you cook, cook chicken at, Chef Jeff? Well, Crazy Chef 16, uh, good question. Um, chicken should always be cooked at at least 165 degrees. Doesn't mean you can't cook it longer than that, but the longer you cook it, the drier the chicken is going to be. But you want it at least 165 degrees. Um, chicken can cause salmonella poisoning, so you want to make sure you cook. Now, along with that, sometimes you might not think about when you're all done with your prep, anything is chicken touched, the cutting board, your knife, whatever. You want to make sure you clean it well with soap and water. If you have some bleach when you're done, wipe it down with bleach. If you have a, a sanitizer, you can wipe down with sanitizer. And if you have a dishwasher, make sure it goes through the dishwasher. You want to kill any possible bacteria that could cause salmonella poisoning. Um, you know, say tomorrow, use that same cutting board knife to cut green peppers, and you forgot to wipe it down, you can make the whole family sick. So uh, thanks, Crazy Chef 16 for the question. And uh, right after this uh, message, we will take a look at how our chicken turned out. Macho, macho man. Step it up. Change your grease once in a while. Put some idiots in the kitchen and know how to cook and cook some decent fries. Hi, welcome back. Uh, got our chicken all ready to go in the oven here and take a look. Now, uh, one step before it goes in the oven. Uh, we back to our parquet that we had in the, to dip it in. Um, if this has uh, been in the refrigerator, go ahead and run it under some hot water for a, a minute or so just to loosen it up a little bit, shake it up good. And then we're going to give each uh, chicken just a little bit of butter on top. And it'll give it a little bit of browning. If we call in the... Uh, the browning of meat we call in the uh, uh, chef industry uh, that's m called Maillard. If you ever hear anybody say Maillard the chicken, we're talking about brown chicken. So the uh, butter will help the Maillard process. Throw it in. I'm going to put that in on the top shelf because uh, the bottom shelf uh, might burn the bottom of the chicken. I'm going to set our timer for 10 minutes. We're going to check the temperature. If it's not up to temp. I'm going to rotate the pan so it cooks evenly and probably go another five to ten minutes after that. Over here on the potatoes, you can see our potatoes are done. We went ahead and now we're starting our vegetable, which won't take very long. Now, a suggestion I have with the potatoes, uh, you can have them just like this, put a little bit of your buttered parquet on it, or you could put them on a sheet tray, uh, salt and pepper them a little bit, a little bit of butter, throw them in your, oven, in your oven and then roast them. If you roast them from this point right forward, uh, they're already soft and they're cooked, so they won't take long to brown up in the oven and they're very good. Uh, I'll back on that chicken for a minute. Uh, thought of some couple different ideas people have brought to me uh, that they liked. Um, take your unsalted pretzels and then add a few of the honey mustard pretzels to it uh, to give your chicken a little honey mustard flavor uh, was one suggestion. Another suggestion is uh, take a ranch seasoning packet that you use to make your own ranch dressing and put a little bit of the ranch seasoning in with, the, with your pretzel mix to give it a little flavor. Um, I haven't tried either one of those methods myself. I wanted to keep it basic today, but in case you're uh, into um, trying something a little bit new, give it a shot. Now for a word from our sponsor.
Okay, uh, it's been about 11 minutes. We uh, were in the other room jamming to King's new song, Electric Halo, and uh, missed the timer. But, as you can see, uh, we're still at about 158 on temperature, and if you remember what I said, uh, 165 is the magic temperature. So, we need to go back in. What we're going to do is just put it back in the exact same spot, but we've turned the tray around so we can make sure it browns evenly. We're going to go ahead and put it on about eight more minutes and check it again. And always check it. Don't just assume it's done. Make sure you check it. Come right on back in eight minutes. The typical day in the average American home. <laughs> Hey kids, why don't you try the new Fart Breeze? Yeah! yeah. I'm pretty sure no snake anymore. See, it makes farts into flowers. Hi, welcome back. Okay, our chicken's all finished, as you can see. Uh, looks scrum diddly umptious. Now, there was one more ingredient, our creamy chicken soup. Easiest way to do this is, this is just going to be a little bit of a, like a gravy. So you pour your chick creamy chicken in the, uh, in a bowl, just a little bit of water. Uh, the rest of the uh, can will say, uh, you know, a whole can, uh, because you're making it a soup, but this is just going to be kind of a gravy, so we're just going to make a little thickness to it. Microwave it for a couple minutes to get it hot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to plate our food. So we take some of your uh, cream of chicken soup. Just a little bit on the bottom there. And a piece of chicken. Top of the gravy. vegetables on there. Some couple of potatoes. Take your uh, parquet, a little butter, top of your potatoes and your vegetable. And there you go. Uh, very healthy meal, cheap, and anybody can make it at home. So let's give it a taste. See how it turned out. Piece of chicken, a little gravy on there. Mmm. I'm gonna do the Robert Irvine dance. Yeah, that's good stuff. Thanks for watching, Chef Defs and Chef Chef Jim's Creative Cooking in a Messy Kitchen. Until next time, eat well. Well, that's a good question. The chicken is very important. Um, you should always cook your chicken at least 160 degrees. <laughs> 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 I was fine to use that. Stop laughing.